have with us tonight another newly elected leader who understands the importance of outrageous aspirations. For more than 20 years, he has served our community. And with this year's election, he broke the curse that has bedeviled Charlotte mayors for decades. I don't see him, but I know he's supposed to be around. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, the next governor of the state of North Carolina who will give us brief remarks, Governor-elect Pat McCrory. Where is he? Oh, there you are. Thank you all very much. Thank you all very much. You know, that reminds me of the reception I used to get going into the city council chambers every Monday night. <laughs> Mayor Fox, it's good to have you in the audience and also the city council. It's good to see a lot of my friends. I also want to uh, congratulate Julius Chambers for the incredible and very well-deserved award that he's getting this evening. I just want to let you know that it seems like over a decade ago, but it was just three years ago that I was on this stage in which Bob Morgan and, and the previous chamber leadership for the past 14 years thanked me for my service as mayor for the past 14 years. That, yet that was only three years ago. At that time, in my brief speech and brief remarks, I stated the following. I said that everything that's worked well in Charlotte was not as a result of any one organization or any one individual. It was a result of teamwork. If you look at every successful recruitment of companies that we've brought to Charlotte, if you look at the building of this building or the building of the light rail line or the building of the arts centers, and the list goes on and on and on, Every reason that those succeeded was because of a team effort between the public and private sector, between Republicans and Democrats, between the east, west, north, and south sides of this city. What I want to do as governor, and I'm very honored to be the next governor of North Carolina, is to bring that team effort that we've had in Charlotte for many generations and bring that same philosophy to Raleigh. And right now, there is a sense of urgency in Raleigh, in state government, to fix some problems that we're having in North Carolina. People are hurting right now in North Carolina. We have the fifth highest unemployment rate in the nation. We have some of the highest taxes in the Southeast. We have regulations that many businesses are currently complaining about and threatening to move from our state. But we are still the best state in the United States of America. We have the best quality of life, we have the best talent, we have the best people. But there is an urgency right now to fix the things that we need to fix in North Carolina because our competition in Virginia, Tennessee, South Carolina, and throughout the world is making major changes right now to meet this competitive world. And we have to do the same thing, not just in the Charlotte region, but throughout North Carolina. So, I'm putting together a team as we speak right now. The day after the election, just two weeks ago, and where we celebrated here in Charlotte, and I was honored to celebrate here in Charlotte, the very next day we got to work. And we put together a transportation, I'm sorry, a transition committee, which has three responsibilities. One responsibility is to find me the talent, to find North Carolina the talent, to fill the cabinet jobs that are so necessary in state government. The second responsibility is to look at the operations of state government and see how we can improve the operations of state government to make it more efficient, more effective, and more customer friendly. The third objective is to look at the policies of North Carolina government to see if we can make them more business friendly. Now, I'm very proud to have on that team some friends of ours in this audience tonight. One of them is the chairman of my transition committee, John Lassiter. I'd like to thank John Lassiter for his service on the school board, for the city council, and for committing a tremendous amount of work on this transition committee. In fact, I just heard that he's in Raleigh right now meeting with committees as we speak. Another person in the audience is Ed McMahon former state representative, did an outstanding job here in Charlotte-Mecklenburg. Ed, it's great to have you be a part of this team. 
And I also am proud to have Tony Almeida, an old colleague of mine, and actually he used to be my boss at Duke Power Company. Tony, of course, knows many of you. He worked with the Charlotte Partnership, worked with the Charlotte Chamber of Commerce, worked with Duke Power Company for over 30 years. Good friends of your next chairman, Brett Carter. And he's a major part of putting my team together. This is not gonna be easy. We've gotta to work together as a state. We've gotta to work together between the East, the Piedmont, and the West. We've gotta to work together among Republicans and Democrats and independents. We've gotta be problem solvers. We've gotta be visionaries. I believe in the Carolina comeback and we're gonna make it happen. I'm very honored to be here tonight. I look forward to you being part of the team. I look forward to me being part of your team. Thank you and God bless you each. And it's great to be home. And I want to let you know that Ann and I plan to keep our house here in Charlotte, even though we're moving to Raleigh. And if my dog doesn't like the mansion, we might be spending a lot more time here in Charlotte than I, I know of at this point in time. Thank you and God bless each one of you. Thank you very much.